Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at an upcoming project. Um, what we have here is a Klausing Candia CNC mill. It's an e-mill. And uh, I recently picked it up. It has a Delta Dynapath uh, Model 10 CNC control on it. Um, the control is about had it. It has an auxiliary board in it that's bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and retrofit this with a Centroid CNC control. I haven't quite decided which one I want to go with yet, um, but uh, I wanted to give you a quick overview of the machine. Again, it's an example of a typical knee mill that's uh, dedicated CNC um, that you could probably find out there. There are hundreds of them, if not thousands of them out there. I am in the Phoenix area and I've so, so far come across a couple of these uh, mills that were ripe for retrofitting. So it's not impossible to find uh, a machine. The nice thing about finding a machine that was designed as a CNC mill, it already has ball screws, it already has limit switches, um, it's dedicated so there's no conversion, you don't have to change screws out and that sort of thing. Uh, of course there's always the risk that there may be some wear on the machine. Um, that said, I kind of believe that if it has automatic lubrication system with the float switch in it uh, that there's a good chance the machine's still serviceable um, especially for uh, light commercial use or home hobby shop use. Um, a little bit about this machine, it has an Ericsson quick change uh, tool system on it. Um, it has the variable speed head, we'll fix this or set it at uh, one to one basically and we're going to drive it with a VFD with a brake. Um, because it has the quick change tooling, um, there's no drawbar on the top. And the fact that there's no drawbar makes this machine uh, a good candidate to put a spindle encoder on it and attach it to the, the spindle tube itself. That would allow for rigid tapping on this machine and uh, monitoring the exact spindle speed. Um, it's got five inches of Z. I'm not 100% sure on the X and Y travels yet. Uh, again, it's a typical knee mill. Um, it's a uh, very well built uh, machine. Um, I'll kind of take you around and let you take a look at it. Um, it's got a three horsepower spindle motor, which is pretty typical. This one has a pneumatic spindle brake. Uh, I will probably not use that since I'm using the VFD uh, with a braking resistor. It has SEM DC brush servos, which really make this a good candidate for an all-in-one uh, DC motion control retrofit from Centroid. Uh, the encoders would need to be changed out to a higher count uh, line driver differential encoder. Um, let's see what else. I'm gonna, I've got the uh, Delta 10 uh, parts on eBay to see if I can offset the cost of the machine. Um, Anyway, I'm trying to see if there's a, trying to think if there's anything else about the machine that uh, is interesting to note. Um, yeah, there there are no hand wheels on this machine. Um, the last uh, Supermax I did had small hand wheels. My Ganesh CNC mill had hand wheels on it. This does not have any hand wheels, and uh, the servo motors on X and Y are enclosed. They're inside or very well shielded. Okay, here's a little closer look at the machine. Uh, as you can see, the Y-axis motor is pretty well enclosed. The X-axis motor is underneath this cover. You can see the, the cable here. There's the cover for the X-axis. And again, the Y-axis is pretty well enclosed. It's a pretty well-built machine. I'll have to modify this a little bit for the uh, the new console. I won't use that cabinet. There's the inside of the existing control cabinet. There you see the Delta control. These are standard servo dynamics 1525 servo amplifiers. That is the uh, step down transformer for the uh, DC brush servos. Um, it's so another step down transformer. A lot of this stuff will just all come out of the cabinet. There's a little uh, 
solenoid for the spindle brake. It has a Trico one shot lube system, automatic oiler. And that's about it. So it's an upcoming project. Um, I definitely want to try and fit a spindle encoder to the top because of the quick, the quick change uh, tool holder system on the spindle. It allows me to put a spindle encoder up top. And uh, that's about it. Stay tuned for some upcoming videos on this machine. And uh, hopefully it'll be of interest to you guys and a new project. <clears throat> I have some others I need to wrap up first but uh, we'll uh, get going on as soon as possible. Talk to you guys soon.